Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. We're coming back to you this week with some competitive EDH gameplay. So expect fast combos and cutthroat strategies. And most of our players at the table today are bringing brand new decks. Speaking of those decks, let's hop right into them. First up is Matt on Derevi Imperial Tactician. This Bant deck is focused around getting stacks on the board early to slow the game down, and then creating infinite mana to win the game. Matt keeps an opening hand of Scalding Tarn, City of Brass, Mana Crypt, Circle of Dreams Druid, Enlightened Tutor, Crop Rotation, and a Swan Song. Up next is Ethan on the partner pairing of Krark and Sakashima. This is a deck is a manual storm deck, hoping to make multiple copies of Krark and copy spells multiple times to take over the game. Ethan keeps an opening hand of Mountain, Arid Mesa, Cephalid Colosseum, Ancient Tomb, Ruby Medallion, Frantic Search, and Submerge. Next is Jason on Oscar, Rubbish Reclaimer. This Demir deck plans to pair Oscar's discard ability with cards like Necropotence and Lion's Eye Diamond to gain a ton of advantage and combo out. Jason has to mulligan to 5, and he keeps a hand of Swamp, Ponder, Vampiric Tutor, Flusterstorm, Force of Will, and has to bottom Malevolent Hermit and Shadow of the Grave. And last but not least, we have Cameron on Yasharn, Implaceable Earth. This Lesnia deck tries to get hard stacks on the board to slow everyone down to a grinding halt, and then murder everybody. He'll keep an opening hand of Forest, City of Brass, Homeward Path, Soul Ring, Llanowar Elves, Eidolon of Rhetoric, and Elish Norn Grand Cenobite. We're about to hop right into it, but before we do, let me know who you think's gonna win. Leave it down in the comments below. And while you're down there, be sure to check out all our links in the description. We've got links for deck lists, our second channel, and even our Patreon. We're also sponsored by Dragon Shield. So if you're looking to pick up any MTG products to protect your purchases, be sure to check out that link in the description as well. But that's enough of that. Let's hop right into that gameplay. Looks like Jason wins the die roll. He'll play a Swamp and then pass the turn to Cameron, who plays his Forest into his Soul Ring and then will pass the turn to Matt. Matt plays his Scalding Tarn and then he'll free cast his Mana Crypt and then will pass to Ethan, who plays his Arid Mesa and then will also pass. Jason will stop him on his end step, and he'll Vampiric Tutor. Matt will respond by cracking his fetch land for a tropical island, and then Jason's Vampiric Tutor will resolve. Now in Jason's turn, he plays the Scalding Tarn he definitely tutored for, and then will fetch with it to get an underground sea. He'll then cast a Ponder, looking at the top three, opting to shuffle, and then will draw a card. He'll then pass the turn to Cameron, who immediately drops his City of Brass and then taps for four to cast Yasharn, and he'll take a damage to his land. Ethan will obviously respond by cracking his fetch land for a volcanic island. Matt decides to respond to the cracking of the fetch to cast an Intuition. Cameron is the declared target of the Intuition, and the three cards that are searched for are Draineth Magistrate, Mystic Remora, and Ristic Study. Then after some discussion at the table, the chosen card is Mystic Remora. Ethan's fetch will then resolve, and then finally, with the Asharn still on the stack, Jason will Force of Will it, paying one life and exiling a Flusterstorm. And then the turn is passed to Matt, who loses his Mana Crypt trigger and then plays his own City of Brass's land for turn. After this, he'll cast his Mystic Remora, and once priority gets to Ethan, he attempts to Pyroblast it. Matt decides to Swan Song the Pyroblast, because he really wants that Remora to resolve, and he'll take a damage to his land. There are no further responses, Ethan will get a 2-2, and Matt has his Remora. Matt will then just pass the turn to Ethan. And at the beginning of Ethan's turn, Cameron and Jason both beg him to not feed the fish, saying that they won't either. So Ethan will just play a Shivan Reef, and then will cast Krark. After this, Ethan will move to combat, and declares 2 damage in the air at the Adnaz deck, which is Jason. And then Ethan will just pass. Now on Jason's turn, since he has three different mana values in his graveyard, his commander only costs two, so he'll cast him. After this, he'll play a Prismatic Vista as land for a turn, and then immediately fetch with it for a snow-covered island. The turn is then passed to Cameron, who starts off his turn with one of my favorite lands of all time, Homeward Path. He'll then cast his Land of War Elves, and then after that, he'll cast his Island of Rhetoric, which does not make Ethan happy, and Cameron will take a damage to his City of Brass. The turn is passed to Matt after this. On his upkeep, he does not take damage from Mana Crypt, and will pay the 1 to his Mystic Remora. Then on his main phase, Metal Cast Birds of Paradise, and then just passes to Ethan, who will immediately move to combat, and will swing 2 in the air at Jason, and 2 on the ground at Matt, and they both just take the damage. After this, Ethan plays Ancient Tomb, and then will tap for 4 mana, taking 2 to the Tomb to cast Sakashima, copying Krark. And after this, the turn is passed to Jason, who will start off with a tapped Watery Grave as land for turn. Then will just pass to Cameron who immediately taps for 6 on his turn, taking 1 to his city, and will recast Yasharn. The pig resolves, and upon entering the battlefield, Cameron gets to search for a forest and a plains to his hand. He'll play the plains as land for turn, and then passes to Matt. Matt loses his crypt trigger, and then decides to just let the fish die. 
Now in his main phase, Matt will tap for 4, taking 1 to his city, and he'll cast a Fairy Master of Time. It resolves, and Matt will immediately uptick him to draw a card, and he'll discard a Circle of Dreams Druid. Matt will then attempt to pass turn, and Ethan will stop him on end step to cast a Submerge targeting Yasharn. There will be two Croc triggers, and Ethan will represent those triggers with Pokemon cards. If it copies, Ethan will flip the card around, if not, he'll just remove it. He also couldn't find a coin, so he'll be rolling a d6. On evens, he'll copy the spell. He'll win the first one, and this copy will target Cameron's Eidolon. He also wins the second one, and the chosen targets are Matt's birds, and Matt will decide to respond by floating a green. The original copy will then resolve, and Cameron decides to not put Yasharn on top of his library, and he'll put him back to the command zone. Now, still on end step, Matt will use that floating green mana to cast a crop rotation, sacrificing a city of brass. It'll resolve, and Matt just finds a command tower, and then the turn is now Ethan's. And on his upkeep, Matt doesn't want Ethan comboing out this turn, so he decides to down tick to fairy to phase out Sakashima. Moving on to Ethan's main phase, play a mountain as land for a turn, and then we'll tap for two to cast his ruby medallion. After this, he'll move to combat, and he wants to ensure that Teferi dies this turn, so he swings both Croc and his 2-2 bird at Teferi, and they'll connect. And without two Crocs, Ethan decides it's best to play the patient game, and he'll pass to Jason, who will immediately drop a Cabal Ritual. It'll resolve, and then Jason will use the three mana, and then tap for an additional two to cast a Scourge Familiar. The turn is passed to Cameron after that. Cameron will start his turn off with a basic forest, and then we'll tap for 7 mana to cast Elish Norn. When priority gets to Ethan, Ethan decides to respond with a frantic search, trying to find some way to counter this. And he takes 2 damage from his tomb. There's only one croc trigger this time, and unfortunately, the dice are not nice. The spell is bounced to his hand. There are no further responses after this, so Elish Norn resolves, killing a lot of creatures. The turn is then passed to Matt, who stops Cameron on his instep to fire off an Enlightened Tutor. Matt, who is really needing some mana right now, decides to put Carpet of Flowers on the top of his deck. Now in his upkeep, Matt wins his Crypt Trigger, then will move to his first main and cast the Carpet of Flowers. He'll then move to his second main and target Jason with Carpet of Flowers. Jason has three islands, so Matt will add three white. He'll use that three white to cast a Recruiter of the Guard, which does die instantly when it enters, but he still gets the ETB trigger. The card he searches up is an Eternal Witness, and then he'll pass the turn to Ethan, who starts off by phasing in his Sakashima, which immediately dies. Moving to his main phase, he'll play a Cephalid Coliseum as land for turn. He then drops a Mana Vault, and then we'll just pass the turn to Jason. It's hard to storm off with Krok and Sakashima with an Elish Norn out. Now in Jason's turn, he'll start off by just swinging one at Matt, and then just passes to Cameron, who starts off with a Sun Petal Grove as land for turn. He'll then drop a Sarah Ascendant, which is an 8-8 lifelink flyer. He'll then drop a Sylvan Library, and then we'll finally drop his Eidolon and Rhetoric again. Cameron moves to combat after this, and swings for 7 at Jason. The turn will then be passed to Matt who loses his Crypt Trigger on his upkeep, then moves to his main phase, and targets Jason with Carpet again. He'll make three green mana with it. After that, he'll tap his Mana Vault to float two colorless mana. He'll use one colorless and two green to cast Eternal Witness, returning Intuition to his hand, and the Eternal Witness dies when it enters. Then, with the green and the colorless floating, Matt will tap for an additional blue and white to activate Derevi's ability, putting him onto the battlefield. He'll untap his Command Tower, and then pass the turn to Ethan. On Matt's end step, he decides, yeah, Matt, Intuition is a good card. I'm gonna cast my own. And that's exactly what he does. And he'll take a damage to his Colosseum. He chooses Jason as his target, and Ethan will search Cyclonic Rift, Mana Confluence, and Prismatic Vista. Jason will give him the Cyclonic Rift. Now on Ethan's turn, he'll play a Training Center as Lane for turn. He'll then just pass the turn to Jason, who immediately moves to combat, and swings for one at Ethan. Jason will then just pass the turn to Cameron, who triggers Sylvan Library, and will pay 4 life to keep one card. Now in his main phase, he'll play a Command Tower as land for turn. He'll then move to combat, and full swing everything at Ethan, and forgets that Elish Norn has Vigilance. Ethan takes the full 18, and Cameron will gain 8 life. After this, the turn will just be passed to Matt, who loses his Crypt Trigger on his upkeep. Then, on his pre-combat main phase, he'll make 3 blue mana, and use it to pop off Intuition again targeting Cameron once again. The three search for cards are Snap, Force of Will, and Silence, and Cameron decides to give him the Snap. Matt will then move to combat and give Ethan a hug in the air. Matt will then pass the turn, and Ethan stops on end step to overload Cyclonic Rift, taking three damage from his lands. The turn is now Ethan's, and now it's his chance to storm off. He starts off by casting Krark, and he'll have one colorless floating. He'll then recast his Frantic Search, and he'll win the flip, getting a copy of it. With the copy on the stack, Ethan will tap his Ancient Tomb for 2 mana, and he'll take 2 damage. He'll then draw 2 and discard a Force of Will and Stifle, then untap 3 lands. Then with the original on the stack, Ethan will tap 3 lands, floating a red, a blue, and 2 more colorless, and will also take 2 damage again. He then resolves the original, discarding Snap and Brain Freeze. Ethan will then tap his Ancient Tomb again, floating 6 colorless mana, he'll then use 5 of it and his blue to cast Sakashima. Matt will attempt to respond by snapping Krark, so Sakashima has nothing to copy. 
Ethan has the Fluster Storm though. Storm count was four, so he'll get four copies of it, and then he'll also get a Krark Trigger. He loses the Krark Trigger, which gives him Fluster Storm back, but he gets to keep all those copies. Matt does not have the mana to pay for any of those copies, so the snap is countered. Sakashima will then resolve, and Ethan now has two Krarks. After this, Ethan will cast a Brainstorm, and he'll get two Krark Triggers. He loses one, bouncing the original Brainstorm to his hand, and then he'll win the other, getting a copy of it. After drawing three and putting two back, Ethan says, you know what, let's do that again. Two Krark Triggers. It's the exact same outcome. He loses the first, and wins the second. After this, he plays an Isle in his lane for turn, and then recasts Brainstorm. This time winning the first roll, and losing the second. Ethan will then go to four by tapping his Shivan Reef to cast Brainstorm again. He wins both rolls this time, which you'd think is bad, but he still gets to draw three, put two back three times. Continuing on with his last colorless, Ethan will cast a Springleaf Drum. After this, Ethan will uses one red floating mana to cast a Desperate Ritual. There's two Krark Triggers, and Cameron decides to respond to them by casting an Eladomri's Call. Ethan will respond to this by casting a Fierce Guardianship, getting two more Krark Triggers. And Ethan represents Cameron's Eladomri's Call on the stack with the white card. Ethan's first Guardianship roll is a copy, and his second is a bounce, meaning he still has Fierce Guardianship. He'll then win his first Desperate Ritual roll, and then he'll win his second one as well, meaning he loses the Ritual, which is actually probably the best thing for the rest of the table. But Ethan now has 9 red mana. Ethan will then cast a Mox Diamond, and then he'll hold priority and Fierce Guardianship it. He'll win both of his rolls again, meaning he has lost the Fierce Guardianship. And that Mox Diamond is hella countered. After this, Ethan drops a Grape Shot, where Storm is 15. He decides to point all of them at Jason, and then there are two Krark Triggers. He loses his first one, which means he gets Grape Shot back to his hand, and then he'll lose the second one, negating one damage on Jason. The copies will then all resolve, pointing at Jason's face, and he'll take 15. Ethan will then recast Grape Shot, Storm count 16, and then he'll get another two Krark Triggers. Ethan will then win his first roll, putting one more at Matt, and then he'll fail his second one, bouncing the Grape Shot back to hand. Of the copies, he points the necessary 9 at Jason, and then 5 at Matt. Then all the copies resolve, and this will kill Jason, and Matt will take 5 more. Ethan will then cast it again, having a Storm count of 17 this time. The first Krark Trigger will fail, bouncing Grape Shot back to his hand, and then the second will succeed, and he's about to point that and all the other damage at Matt to kill him. But Matt argues that Ethan actually needs to focus down Cameron right now, because if Ethan does fizzle out here, Cameron just drops Elishnorn, ruining Ethan's game plan. Ethan ultimately ends up agreeing, pointing 18 damage at Cameron, and then he'll recast Grape Shot, this time Storm Count 18. And then it happens. Ethan rolls even two times. This means he gets to point 21 damage, but he loses his Grape Shot, and Ethan points all 21 damage at Cameron, putting him to 1. Ethan frantically searches for a way to either keep going or to at least kill Cameron, but he can't find anything. So this is the end of his turn, and he passes. On Cameron's turn, he'll cast his Soul Ring, so he can now tap for 7 and cast Elish Norn. This'll kill both of Ethan's Krarks, and then the turn is passed to Matt. Matt decides to just cast his Mana Crypt as land for turn, and then he'll pass to Ethan. Ethan starts off by dropping a Jeweled Lotus, but unfortunately, Ethan can't cast either of his Commanders to block this Elish Norn, because they die immediately. So, he just passes the turn. Cameron will start off his turn with a Bondage Enclave, and then he'll move to combat, and attempt to swing lethal at Ethan. There are no responses at the table, and Ethan is dead. After this, Cameron will drop Skyclave Apparition, exiling Matt's Mana Crypt to leave him with only 2 mana. Cameron will then attempt a Green Sun Zenith, X is equal to 4, but Matt has a Dovin's Veto, and he snaps that puppy off. After this, Cameron will recast his Sarah's Ascendant, and then the turn is passed to Matt. And Matt draws the most interesting way to win a game ever. A Misty Rainforest. You might be wondering how this wins him the game. Well, first he fetches with it for a Savannah. He then taps for 3 to cast his commander, Derevi, and when he enters the battlefield, he will tap Cameron's City of Brass, dealing 1 damage to him, killing Cameron, and winning him the game. That has to be the most unique win featured on our channel, and you guys got to see it here first. Way to go, Matt, that was awesome. Well guys, there you have it. I've gotta say, that's probably my favorite game of CDH I've ever talked over. What did you guys think? Did you expect that as the winning play? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. We love hearing from you guys. And don't forget to check out those links down in the description to pick up some Dragon Shield products and check out all of our other content and deck lists. But that's all for today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and have a smooth day.